My son's waiting out there. He's he's tired. He was crying. He wanted to come in here with me, so you guys don't have to. Uh, I don't have to answer tough questions, but he's crying out there because he's because he's sleepy. All right, hit it. Hey, Nick, have you seen a wide receiver play at this level that AJ Brown has done? Man, a AJ is a phenomenal player. He just has this unbelievable ability to come down with the football. Um, nobody catches the ball as pretty as AJ Brown. Nobody. Like I, I can't tell you how many times at practice. Like I, I'm just in awe of good uh, wide receivers and and you know just the the skill that they have and like nobody goes and snags the football like him. Like there's, no, there's nobody I've seen in per and it's so much. It's so much cooler in person to see that and when it's on your team. So he, he's on a tear right now. Um, and the other guys are playing good, too. They're, why is he on a tear? Well, because Devontae Smith's on one side. And, and Dallas Goddard is, on, is in the middle. And, and DeAndre Swift's in the backfield. And now Julio Jones over there. So appreciative of Howie. And, man, I, I thought there was something I, I would – I thought I would never say this, but, but I think this week at practice, A.J. was having an unbelievable practice. And I went up to Mr. Laurie and I go, I, I'm like, there's no way I ever thought this would have came out of my mouth. Thanks for the $100 million to pay A.J. Brown. I really appreciate that. Like a guy from Jamestown, New York, I, I never thought I'd ever say, hey, thanks for the $100 million to pay A.J. Brown. How you the number one ranked offense uh, to just 17 points? We got a good defense. Uh, great job to the defensive staff, first and foremost, to put them in positions to make plays. Um, but at the end of the day, it's about the players making the plays. And so I, what I thought was really – we made them one-dimensional. Because that team – man, I, I can't tell you how much respect I have for, for Mike and his staff and those players. I mean, I talk about the, the guy that's the prettiest catching the ball on A.J. Brown. I never seen anybody as fast as Tyreek Hill in person. Like, I mean, damn. Uh, he's fast as hell. Um, and, and so, like, but great job by our DBs. Uh, you know, we knew he was going to get some, some plays and, and this and that, but, um, f you know, starts with our, off our defensive line and being able to apply pressure, which, which I thought we did, and the, and the DBs did a good job of making him hold the ball a tick uh, when we did were able to get home. Um, but it started with making him one-dimensional, and I thought, like, I think you saw some good things there with Hassan, with the way they, they kind of stopped the toss crack play and, and set the edge, um, you know, because they've, they've, they've been highly successful on that play. Um, and and Mike, got into, Mike did a good job of getting it going because he ended up hitting a couple. They ended up hitting a couple by disguising it and not tossing it and handing it behind. Like, I can't tell you how much respect I got for, for that staff, uh, but uh, great job by our defensive staff, great job by our defensive players. Uh, what do you say about Sean Desai, though, that he's been able to do this with, with so many injuries in that secondary? Yeah, I mean, you see why we hired him, right? Um, you know, we, we knew uh, the type of guy we were getting. Um, I just think he's done a phenomenal job of, you know, what I think he's just done a, such a good job of is, is what I admire of any coach, adapting to the personnel that you have. Um, you know, and I think he's done that and, and uh, you know, we'll continue to look to climb. But Sean has done, an, uh, has done a great job of putting the guys in positions to, to make plays. And, and our defensive staff, they all contribute to that. Um, so hats off to all of them. And, and obviously hats off to Howie because, you know, it's all about the players. And, and we're really we're doing a great job up front. Um, again, Hassan Reddick doesn't have to sack the quarterback to affect the game. Josh Sweat. You know, same thing, um, being able to, it, and again, I'll have to watch the tape, but just live, it looked like those two guys had an unbelievable game. Yeah, you on the fourth and one play from your own 26, it looked like you needed a little time to think about whether you wanted to go for it. I didn't that. know what the down and distance was exactly. I think, you know, initially I thought yeah, I, I thought it was a little bit further back than it was, and then I got a good look of where the spot was. I probably should have been stand. I didn't, I didn't love that I had to call a timeout there. You know, but I had to get a, a, a second look at where the spot was. I thought initially it was two, um, but it was more like a, a yard. And I thought to myself, well, I'd be crazy if I don't go for it, a fourth and one with the type of guys that we have. And, and so, again, it goes back to the dudes that we got uh, and making the play. What, what kind of psychological <clears throat> edge do you think it gives you guys that you can run that play? It's first and nine every down. Yeah. You know, every first down is first and nine. Um, Knowing that if you get the fourth, fourth and one, um, shoot, a lot of faith in that play. Um, just be, you know, yeah. So um, it, it was awesome. Again, just Jason Kelsey starts it off. Jalen Hurts, uh, you know, is right there. You know, haven't been able to drive because you've seen it, right? You've seen it across the league that people can't do it like we can do it.
they can't do it like we can do it. And uh, and so I'm making my plug right there, like, don't don't ban this play. Like, if everyone could do it, everybody would. Where's the camera? If everybody could do it, everybody would do it. He looked like he got banged up. He was AJ alluded yeah. to it. Rob, I know you're not here every day when we're with the with the local media. I'm probably not giving you that information. We'll see. I, I got to talk to the trainers. Uh, I got to talk to Jalen. We'll get him in tomorrow. Uh, John's going to ask me tomorrow. Elliot's going to ask me tomorrow. How's Jalen? I'm going to say I got to see him a little bit more. I'll let you know Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday's going to come. It's going to be before practice. They're going to ask me again. I'm going to say I got to see how it's how it's looking out there, um, and I'll get you some more information on Friday. Friday, we'll see if he's on the injury report or not. Um, and when Friday comes, he's gonna, they're going to ask, what do you all think? What's going to happen here? I said, we'll get you the injury report later in the day. Um, I just string them along. <laughs> you didn't like that, Bob? I'm fine with it. Nick, I know in general how you handle like injuries, obviously, but this is the franchise quarterback. People would be concerned. Is there anything else you can give? Did he put a brace on at halftime? Is he dealing with that? Played the rest of the game, and he played at a very high level. Um, you have to ask Jalen. I, I thought he played really, really outstanding. Um, man, he's a competitor. Um, man, there's nobody else I'd rather be, be our quarterback. And he, he, he played his butt off tonight. Um, he's tough. You know, y'all saw. I mean, y'all saw that he was going through a little something. And so he is tough. He is tough. He is tough. This game always comes down to physicality and toughness. It always does, no matter what, um, because it's a hard, it, and that's physical and mental toughness, and Jalen Hurts has both. In the locker room. Uh, after last week's game, is this the kind of response you expected from your guys, just knowing their makeup, knowing their drive, how they work? Is this kind of what you expected from yeah, you know, you go back to work each week. It's dog mentality. No matter what happens, you go back to work each week. And that's the same message as it's going to be this week. You just want to keep improving so you're playing your best ball at the end of the year. And so, um, you know, I, I expect them to respond this game like they did last game because that's the type of guys we have. In the last game, you had a bit of a turnover drought. Slay made that big yeah. peg. He, he kind of peeled off. It looked like a wheel, wheel route. I don't know how good of a look you saw at it, but is that – more football IQ play, athleticism. What, what, what makes yeah, I mean, Slay has it all, right? F football IQ, athletic ability. I can't tell you how good of a leader Darius Slay is. Um, and he'll be mad that I said Darius Slay, but I can't tell you how big of a leader he is. Like, I'm so glad he's on this football team. I'm so glad he's a, he's a captain because he works. He works at it. He works to, to bring the young guys up. Um, shoot. I'll say he, he brought he, he brought uh, Zach McPherson. Zach Zach McPherson's down, right? When you go through injuries, you're you're going to be down. Um, it's tough. He brought him to the the um, baseball game the other day um, to spend time with him. Like, and that's something you guys want to know. And I, and I feel comfortable saying that because I just want people to know how good of a player he is. Everyone knows how good of a player he is. He's tough. I just want to know everyone to know how good of a leader he is, and that's and that when you have good leaders on your football team, um, you'll be able to handle the ups and downs of a season. And we, man, we got great leaders on this football team. Last one, Zach. In the locker room, the players kept talking about physicality. How did that factor into your messaging this week? Yeah, I mean, our our whole talk this week was about details and physicality, right? We lost on some, we we did some things last week, detail wise, that we want back. Um, and, you know, when we talk about details, it's like, hey, we got all the talent we need in this room. And when the details are on, the talent can shine. And sometimes when the details are off, it doesn't no matter how much talent you got. And so um, uh, it was about details. It was about, you know, and it was about physicality, about being able to come out and, and – Lean like I, I always feel like when we play our best is when we're we're leaning on you know obviously Jalen playing great but we're leaning on those offense and defensive lines, um, and so you know I, I that's just I thought I felt that completely like the the time that we had to throw the the way we stopped the run you, you lean on those guys and and so that was the message this week but shoot those guys went out and did it and they and they played their butts off I'll answer one more I'm always the good guy here. Uh, Bob, Bob's the bad guy, and then I'm the good guy. It was Bob's birthday the other day. Yeah, thanks. thanks. So it looked like Jalen was a little late coming out after, after the half, and Marcus was warming up. Was there some you know, uh, 
could it have been possible? I, you know what? I, Marcus might have just been throwing. I, I didn't even tell Marcus to warm up. I knew Jalen was coming back in the game. He, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, he might be in getting an IV. He gets IVs sometimes at halftime. So sometimes when you don't get the ball to start the second half, you can finish the IV. Um, it was pretty hot out there. I, probably, I, might, I need, might need an IV next time. Uh, but yeah, I, I think that's all that was about. All right. Yeah. Everybody good? Thanks, everybody.